Hi, this is Fish, and welcome to Fish Picks. Like any skill, Locksport employs a niche vocabulary which allows participants to talk to one another about the craft and practice of picking. For the newcomer, some of these terms can be quite bewildering, and so today I'm going to be offering a crash course in Locksport lingo, so you too can be down with the cool kids. We'll be looking at the terminology you'll need to talk about keys, locks, and the tool used when picking locks. Now, as a newcomer myself, this isn't going to be exhaustive, but it should be enough to get you started as you navigate your first weeks or months through the forums. So let's start with the humble little key. This is what most muggles use to open a lock. What are they thinking? A key blank is one which has not yet been cut to a specific lock profile, and there are various kinds of blanks depending on the make of lock it's designed to fit. When you come to impressioning your own keys, you can get hold of these pretty easily. A key is composed of a head, or bow, and a blade. The connecting point between the two is known as the shoulder. Between the tip and the shoulder, a key has a series of ridges and notches known as cuts, which make up the bitting of that specific key. The bitting of a key is designed to lift all of the keys to the shear line in order to achieve an open, but for that to make sense, we'll need to take a look at a lock in more detail. For today, we're going to restrict ourselves to looking at the pin tumbler lock, but there are a whole bunch of other kinds of locks out there, including combination locks, disc detainers, dimple locks, tubular locks, wafer locks, and warded locks, to name just a few. A lock consists of a lock body and the locking mechanism within it. Sometimes this body is referred to as its shell, its housing, or the hull. Inside sits the plug, or core, which is the active rotating element of the pin tumbler mechanism, the bit that, if you like, tumbles. At the front of the plug, you'll find the keyway into which the key is inserted. There are numerous kinds of keyway on the market, and some are easier to work with than others. While some are open, giving plenty of space for us to access the pins with our tools, Others have bits of warding that can force us to have to work at awkward angles. If you can draw a line from the top to the bottom of the keyway without being interrupted by the warding, it's referred to as non-paracentric, while a paracentric keyway interrupts that line and such keyways are generally more challenging. The lock body and the plug have a series of aligned, drilled through chambers in which the pins and springs are housed. Lock picking takes advantage of the fact that these drilled holes are not perfectly aligned to a centre point but are off-centre by fractions of a millimetre depending on the tolerances in the manufacturing process. This creates what is known as the binding order for the lock. I've already talked about binding order and seven other factors that determine how easy or difficult a lock is to open in video number one and I'll put a link in the description. Or you could always subscribe and then come back to it at your leisure. There are two kinds of pins. Key pins, and sitting on top of them, driver pins. Either or both of these pins can consist of standard or security pins with various kinds of profiles designed to make picking more challenging. These pins are stacked on top of each other and held under tension by a spring which sits above them exerting downward force. The key pins are of varying lengths corresponding to the bitting on the key. A deep cut will require a long key pin, while a shallow cut will require a shorter key pin. They can be distinguished from the driver pins by the fact that they narrow to a point so that they can sit more precisely on the ridges and notches of the key. These are the pins that we'll be probing with our pick, and different lock manufacturers will have slightly different sizes and spacing between key pins. You can buy a tool designed to identify the specific cuts each type of lock manufacturer employs, but for most beginners this isn't something you need to worry about. 
An experienced picker can sound a bit like a dentist as he or she moves skillfully from one pin to the next, calling out the binding order, while the rest of us might not really be sure which pin we're touching much of the time. There's a lot of trial and error involved in the early stages of Locksport. The top of the key pins are flattened off so that the driver pins sit directly on top of them. When the correct key is inserted into the plug, all of the key pins rise smoothly to what is known as the shear line. This is the point where the plug ends and the lock body begins. The rest of the chambers which extend up into the lock body are known collectively as the Bible. In the absence of a key, by applying rotational pressure to the plug, while we push each of the pins upward in turn, the key pins come to sit at the shear line while the driver pins will be lifted into the bottom of the Bible. You can sometimes feel each pin setting because the lock will turn ever so slightly in the direction in which you are applying rotational pressure. When all of the stacks are in this condition, the lock will be free to turn and open. If we push a pin stack too hard, we might inadvertently force part of the key pin as well as the driver pin into the Bible, and this will prevent the plug from rotating. This is referred to as oversetting a pin and requires us to release the tension in order to reset the stack. It's easy to be heavy handed in the early days so this is likely to happen a lot. If a driver pin is a security pin rather than standard then we can experience something called a false set. If we take a spool pin, by way of example, and apply upward pressure, moving the head of the driver pin above the shear line, the narrower body of the pin will cause the plug to suddenly rotate. If we continue to apply upward pressure, it will feel as if the pin stack has become jammed. In this case, we need to ease off our pressure just enough to allow us to push the second head of the pin to shear without ideally dropping any of the pins we've already set. And it's this cat and mouse game of seeking out the subtle signals we're receiving from the lock that makes lock sport so compelling. Or infuriating. Or both. So, now we've met the enemy and it's time to talk about the tools we have at our disposal to achieve ultimate victory. Picks come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes and newcomers will often ask what the best set is to invest in, which is a kind of how long is a piece of string kind of question really. It all depends on budget, availability and the kinds of locks you're looking to pick. Picks come in various thicknesses, are made from different grades of steel and each profile is designed to do a specific kind of job. This isn't a review video, so I won't be recommending a particular set today, but I will point out that if you stick with Locksport, your pick sets will probably evolve. You'll start with a cheaper starter set and then move on to a recommended brand set. And then slowly, over time, you'll cull out picks that you tend not to use while adding individual picks that become firm favorites. Some of you might go on to design and make your own picks or invest in one-off handcrafted picks which can become works of art. That's all part of the journey, so enjoy the process and allow your sets to build organically. Some of the more popular starter tools are the rakes, including the city rake, the snake, the bogota, and hybrid rakes like the Nessie. These tools are used to zip, rock and rake the pins in what is often referred to as a kinetic attack. There is an element of chance in these kind of attacks and some purists are somewhat dismissive of this kind of an approach. I think this is a matter of preference and depends on what you're trying to achieve. If your aim is to open a lock as quickly as possible using any non-destructive approach available, such as during a lock sport competition, then kinetic attacks can be fast and effective. On the other hand, if you become too dependent on those techniques, you'll hit a barrier at a certain point when the locks you're trying to advance to won't be susceptible to those kind of kinetic approaches, and then you'll have to learn SPP, or single pin picking. To pick pins one at a time, 
You'll use profiles such as hooks, including the Gonzo, named after a particular Muppet for obvious reasons, and the Gem, which you can think of as a Gonzo after cosmetic surgery. You have the Half Diamond, the Ball and Half Ball, sometimes referred to as the Snowman and Half Snowman. And then there are extractors designed to retrieve broken keys from within the lock plug. With just a few rakes and a couple of hooks, you'll be equipped to tackle most beginner locks, so don't get too hung up on collecting hundreds of exotic profiles. It's often not so much about the pick you are using so much as the tension and the technique which will be holding you back. In order to apply rotational pressure to the plug, you'll need a tensioning wrench. You can basically divide tensioning tools into BOC and TOC, which are acronyms for bottom of keyway and top of keyway, respectively. It's a good idea to have a selection of both when starting out because you'll find that some locks open more easily using one method of tension than another. Just because a lock is typically picked open by manipulating the pin stacks, this is often not the only way to affect an open, and LockSport can embrace other approaches altogether using some ingenious workaround tools and methods. These bypass methods include shimming the lock by attacking weaknesses in the shackle security, or using comb picks, jigglers, decoders, and other methods which we'll explore in future videos. And then there are a whole bunch of specialist gizmos such as the Lishi 2-in-1 tools, which can be used to both pick and decode a specific lock and key profile. There are pinning trays, followers and retaining ring removal tools, all of which may come into play when you start to gut and repin locks. And I'm mentioning them here just to make the point that lock sport and lock picking is a journey rather than a destination. The rabbit hole is as deep and winding as you want it to be, so take your time, enjoy the ride and just see where it takes you. So there you have it. If there is any term I haven't covered here, and I'm sure there'll be many, then please do leave a comment and we'll use the power of crowdsourcing to build a bank of definitions and explanations as we go along. I hope you found this useful and I wish you every success in your Locksport adventure. <laughs>